A function is a built-in algorithm that performs some calculation based on data you specify and then returns a result. So consider a function an expression on steroids. A function oftentimes replaces an expression that you'd have to create manually. You can use functions in a variety of places. And depending on the specific function, functions can be used to set field properties, they can be used in calculated fields, form and report controls, filter conditions, or even in macros or visual basic code. That being said, functions can look quite simple or they can be quite complex, nesting several different functions into one. Now when building or referencing functions in Microsoft Access, for your convenience, if you are using the Expression Builder to reference those functions, Access will categorize those functions into one or more of the following categories. You have Arrays, Conversion, Database, Date Time, Domain Aggregate, Error Handling, Financial, General, Inspection, Math, Messages, Program Flow, SQL Aggregate, and Last Text. So, no matter which function you choose and how you choose to use those functions in Access, the syntax or rules for using a function are quite similar. To use a function, write the name of the function out. Then follow that function name with an open parenthesis. Then, right after that open parenthesis, write out the necessary function arguments. If your particular function contains more than one argument, make sure to separate those arguments with a comma. And an argument, if you're not really familiar with that term, an argument is some piece of information that the function needs to operate. An argument can be a field reference, a string, an expression, etc. Now most functions will require at least two arguments like we have shown here, but some will only require one, while others don't require any arguments at all. When finished writing out all the function arguments, tell Access you are finished with your function with a close parenthesis. And that's how you write a function. Basic date time functions. The now function returns a date specifying the current date and time according to your computer's system date and time. The function has no function arguments, which means this is all you have to type. And yes, you do still have to type out the parentheses. That's how Axis knows you are referencing a function. The date function, very similar to the now function, will return the current system date. The function also contains no function arguments, and also, like the now function, you still need the open and close parentheses. To demonstrate uses for both the now and date functions, we're going to open one of the exercise files called contacts, which I have open right down here. And opening up this, we want to open up the table TBL contacts, which contains 10,000 contacts. And off to the right hand side you'll notice two date fields. We've got an added field which displays when that contact was added to our database and a last modified field. Now if we were to go and add a brand new record to Access, every time we get to the added field or the last modified field we'd have to either type out a date or use the date picker. Now since this added field is referencing, well, pretty much whatever today's date is going to be when adding that record, we can save our users a lot of time by setting the default value for this field to whatever today's current date is. So if we jump back into the table's design view and select that particular field added, in the Field Property section on the tab called General, you'll notice a field property called Default Value, which is a value that is automatically entered in this field for new records. And to reference whatever today's date is, we're going to write out that date function. So typing out that date, type out the word date, followed by an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. Now when I move off the field, 
and then save the record and jump back into my datasheet view and jump to that new record slot. When I scroll over, now you can see today's current date and today is October 2nd. That date is automatically typed in or entered into that added field. Likewise, we're going to do the exact same thing to the last modified field, only this time we're going to use the now function because we want to store both the date and the time, not just the date. So where it says default value, with that last modified field selected, I'm going to type out now, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and when I press enter, Access automatically capitalizes now, which is a good sign. It means it recognizes that function. And skipping back into datasheet view, it's going to ask me if I want to save my table. Of course I do. And when I jump down to a new record slot, now I've got both a date automatically entered into my added field and a date and time entered into my last modified field. Thus saving the end user a bit of time when entering new records into Access. The month function extracts a whole number from 1 to 12 from a date value. And the function has but one required argument, which can be a reference to any variant, numeric expression, string expression, etc. that can represent a date. The year function, like the month function, returns an integer that represents the year part of a specified date. And it also requires but one function argument, which can also be a reference to a variant, numeric expression, string expression, etc. that can represent a date. To demonstrate the month and year functions, we're going to be opening up a new exercise file called Picaroon Sales. And I have mine open down here. And there's a lot of tables, lots of queries, lots of forms, and a report in this particular database. For the month and year function, we're going to be using a query called QRY orders. So opening that up, here's what our query looks like so far. We have five fields, book ID, book title, transaction date, retail price, and a quantity field that says it's being summed up. In fact, if we jump back into design view, you can see that this is set up as an aggregate query. We've got our totals row open where we're grouping by book ID, book title, transaction date, retail price, and then summing up that quantity field. So basically information in this query is being grouped by information from our books table and then by transaction date. But we're going to add a new field off to the right that's simply going to take information that's stored in this transaction date and only display the month part of that. So jumping back into design view, we're going to click inside that blank field slot next to quantity and then open up our expression builder. So moving our cursor up to the top where it says query setup and clicking on that builder icon, we're going to open up our built-in functions folder, which is located in the expression elements section underneath the subheading functions. And then clicking on built-in functions will open up your expression categories. Month and year are both date-time expressions, so clicking on the date-time category, there are all of your date-time functions off to the right. And we want to use first our month expression. So to add that expression to our expression builder, simply take your mouse and double-click on month. And that function will appear up top with a placeholder for all of your function arguments. And this one, since it only requires one date, all we've got to do is select on that placeholder and then begin typing out a reference to our transaction date field. So starting with an open bracket and begin typing. And we've got IntelliSense showing us that we've got a field named transaction date there. To add that field as a reference, all you've got to do is press Enter, and Access will finish typing that field reference for us. So here's what our expression looks like. Month, open parenthesis, then open bracket, transaction date, all one word, exactly as the field appears in our database, close bracket, and then close parenthesis. So with that in our expression builder, click OK, and then run the query.
Now I just did this. This this really doesn't bear any real purpose to our to this particular query just yet. I just wanted to show you exactly what this function is doing. These numbers represent that month part of our transaction date. So anytime you see that month appear in the transaction date, that same number will appear in this field right here. And again, that's just to show you what exactly the function is doing. Now we're going to make this a little bit more useful to this particular query. Instead of grouping all of our orders by book title and transaction date, let's say we really only want to see the orders for a particular month and a particular year. Let's say we want to see orders for March of 2010. Well, this particular query is showing us all of the orders in our database, going back all the way from 2007 and all the way up to May of 2010. So what we're going to do now is add criteria to our transaction date field that's going to specify that we only want to see one particular month and one particular year. So in that first criteria slot, we're going to begin writing out our first function, which is going to be our month function. Then in the function argument slot, we're going to write out the reference for transaction date, close parenthesis, and the month of the transaction date is going to be equal to, well, in this case, March. But we're not going to write out the word March. That's not what this function does. It spits back a number part or a whole number that represents the month. So we're going to use the number 3. And just to show you what that looks like so far, when we run the query, so far we're getting all or only our orders from March. But it's giving us all of the years. We've got orders from 2007, 2008, 2009, and 2010. So we're going to need to tack on more to this criteria. In fact, we're going to have to use the AND operator and then begin writing the reference to our year function. So typing out year, open parenthesis. Once again, we're going to write the reference to our transaction date field, close parenthesis, and that's going to be equal to the year 2010. And clicking off of that criteria slot, you'll notice it'll capitalize the operator AND. That's a good sign. It means it recognizes that as an operator. And when we run our query one more time, now we're only seeing orders from March of 2010. And that's just one example of how you can use the month and the year function in Access, in this case as query criteria. And on a side note for that month and year function, just remember that for both the month and the year function, no matter where you're using it, as query criteria, as a calculated detail field, Wherever, if the supply date, in our case it was that transaction field, contains a null, a null will be returned. So keep that in mind when using the month or year functions.